Camping Steve here. I was wrong. Spring is not here. Winters came back. Uh, usually the snow is gone by now. Usually the river's flowing. But this year is apparently 165 days so far that it's been uh, low below freezing. So uh, I've got a few projects, uh, a few things we're going to look at. We're going to cook a meal up. I've uh, got to go do some uh, driving around town. We'll take a look at a little bit of town. And uh, other than that, we're going to keep going and hunkering down here in this sub-zero weather in the tent uh, for the next uh, week and a half-ish. And then it's back to reality. So uh, we'll see what happens after that. But uh, more on that later. And the, the cheapest option other than the campground in town is this motel. Now I'm not a snobby guy, I'll stay in a motel like this, but for the price they're asking, six seventy for a single, I don't know, that's over twice what the campground charges and it, it's not very nice. So uh, their monthly rates I think were over a thousand dollars a month here, so yeah. I don't know, I've stayed in, I've stayed in places like this before, not too bad, but uh, I'm, a, I'm fine with the campground. Hooray, hooray! Easy way to get water in this town is to go to the vending machines. And I think I'm just topping this up. A gallon should probably do it. Worth, worth the 75 cents. I'll say that much. It takes a lot of melting to make that happen. But uh, this little coin water vending machine in this town. Far out. Uh oh. I don't know if it works. Okay, water vending machine, here we go. The other one didn't want to do its job. This one takes Canadian quarters because... Oh, there we go. Woohoo! I don't know if it'll take a gallon, but uh, it's a lot easier than melting snow. Come on. Bingo, we've got water. This is the college I'm going to for gas fitting school. Just finishing off my last year. Uh, the flags are at half mast because there was a, a bus tragedy with the hockey players from Humboldt, Saskatchewan, which is not far from, from here. So, but that's the school I go to. Hey guys, back in the tent. I have to first off, give a big uh, thumbs up to the people who have sponsored me with beer for this adventure. Um, it's not fancy stuff. Uh, well, it is fancy for out here, but there's a limited selection. So it's more Electric Avenue uh, Wild Rose Brewery, which is pretty good stuff. But uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, it's really making things a lot more enjoyable out here, to put it that way. Anyway, so we've got uh, the regular gel fuel that uh, I picked up. Then there's hand sanitizer. A lot of people have been saying hand sanitizer is the way to go. And I think actually, to be honest, the price between the two is pretty similar. So, oh, thanks again, guys. Um, the biggest aspect is gonna be the characteristics of their burn. So we're gonna light some of these on fire here, uh, just side by side. We'll see how long they burn. Uh, kind of how good the flames are and how sticky this stuff is because I know this it's almost like napalm It really sticks to the wood and the pellets this we'll see it's probably pretty sticky too But we'll light this up and see how that goes as long as they have similar characteristics I might be more inclined to use the uh, hand sanitizer because it's dual use when you're out camping you can start your fire You can sanitize your hands uh, this stuff mm, I wouldn't sanitize my hands with it, but uh, Let's light this up and see what happens. 
contestant number one a small blob of this guy. No oh, good, it shows up in the video. And contestant number two is the hand sanitizer. And I think that one shows up nicely too. So, hand sanitizer, fire starter gel, specific for the purpose. And we'll light them up as quickly at the same time as we can. And uh, so far, they're looking about the same. The fire starting stuff is a lot more gel-like. Uh, this spreads out further, but I would think both would do in a pinch. Almost identical flame characteristics. Yeah, the only real difference is that the hand sanitizer spreads out more, and this is more sticky. So it's probably the only actual difference is they've put in some type of a emulsifier in with this one to make it just stick on to whatever you're burning better. But we'll let these burn for a bit. I'm going to enjoy a delicious frosty beer and uh, catch up with you in a sec. People were right. I think they're exactly the same thing with a little bit of thickening agent in this coyote here. So they would both work equally well in my opinion. And uh, this has the added benefit of you can use it to sanitize your hands when you're out camping. And this one I would not. So that's where we are here. And it's time to use one of these culprits to start the fire. This guy. I've been using a fair bit. I'm going to give it a shot with uh, our new friend here, the unnamed brand hand sanitizer, because I don't want to get copyright infringement on these things. I've had it before I put up a video, and there was just a logo of something in the background, and they were like, no, you can't use a brand name logo, so I just don't want any trouble. We're going to get this fire started and uh, slowly start working on dinner. Tonight is uh, beef and broccoli with rice. And we're gonna do the rice vacuum flask cooking. And we'll get into that, boil up some water, put it in the flask, let her go. So we'll get the fire started and uh, continue hunkering down. And thanks again guys for the beer. My disclaimer on this uh, fire starting thing here is that the new bag of pellets I got must have been damaged in freight because a lot of it is sawdust so I'm picking through to get the good pellets out but that's not what you want the biggest benefit to buying the pellets over a bag of sawdust is that the air can flow in between them and keep the fire going so I'll throw in the good ones and we'll get her going Five squirts of mystery hand sanitizer. Find a lighter. And we'll see if that does the trick. I won't hold judgment against the stuff if it doesn't light right away because there is uh, all that sawdust in there. So, get the draft going here. And I'm hoping for good news. Very good news. Hand sanitizer is a perfectly viable option for starting at least a wood pellet stove. And it would probably work on uh, a bunch of good dry wood as well. So this problem is solved. Now we're going to get this cauldron boiling full of some water. I don't need that much for the food, but we're going to do some dishes, etc. I won't bore you with that. And we'll continue doing our camping. 
Hey campers, I'm about to start the rice in this, uh, it's a vacuum flask uh, with a lid for it. So this is one of those ones that keeps uh, it things warm for, you know, 12 hours or whatever. It's like a, like a thermos, but this one's kettle version. I use it because it holds more. But uh, for the rice, always uh, one part rice to two parts water. I'm going to ballpark it here with this uh, plastic beer cup. But it's about right for my needs. That guy in there. And I got some boiling water in, in about the only pot I have. So. This is step two in the process. Get that in there. And the last ingredient that I use is a bit of better butter, because a bit of better butter makes a bit of batter better. And uh cheap out on the butter, but a bit of a mangled pack of butter from the, the cooler. However, that should do the job there. Oh, throw the lid on this guy. These you can use as far as uh, cooking something with minimal fuel. You know, if you're backpacking, well, I guess you don't want to bring something big and heavy when you're backpacking, but if you are in a fuel shortage situation, you can throw your boiling water, etc., in one of these guys and let it cook for 12 hours. It'll still be piping hot when it comes out, so there's going to be fully cooked rice in there when that comes out. That's just one less thing I have to monitor on the stove. So I mentioned before I'm doing beef and broccoli, kind of a one of these foil pouch dinners. These are a favorite with campers because you throw everything in, you can put it in a campfire, whatnot, just let it go. I've got the rice already happening, so that makes me glad. And this guy, it's gonna be some broccoli. Making a bit of a big one so I can take a lunch to school tomorrow instead of having lunch lady Doris there me at a bowl full of slop. I'm kidding, it's actually decent food there, but uh, I'd rather cook my own. Anyway, so it's just some beef stir-fry strips and broccoli. And the secret ingredients for this uh, concoction here, well, this is going to be a big dinner. Uh, the secret ingredients for this guy here, if you ever get like take out Chinese food uh, from not like authentic Chinese food but Americanized Chinese food it all has that bit of a kind of a gray sauce to it whether it's the chow mein, beef and broccoli, it's all kind of that same sauce. That sauce is a combination of oyster sauce which is the bulk of the flavor there and then you throw in some soy sauce Wrap this guy up real good. And it's going to sit here and uh, sit here and do the work for me for a while. I don't want it to scorch on the bottom, so I'm going to throw it underneath of this ceramic pan and they do do the job like they say in the commercials. I did manage to get some stuff scorched onto it, but that was only through negligence. I had it going on the roaring campfire outside. They can take oven heat, oh, but they sure can't take that uh, 
you know, blazing campfire here. So this guy is gonna cook for until it feels done, I suppose. And I've got the rice uh, working its magic there in the vacuum flask. Uh, I got to address the fact that school is coming to an end in a week and a half. And I've had a blast out here and I really want to keep doing videos like this. And the reason is that you guys have been so supportive in the comments and I actually really enjoy filming these things. So I'm going back to the city and it's a city of, you know, give or take a million people in the greater area. And uh, one of the claims to fame there is that it has the largest stretch of urban parkland in North America. I don't know how true that is, but uh, it must be a bit true. But there is a lot of river valley in the city. They frown on camping there, but I just might do it. Uh, I'm fairly close to the mountains as well, and I'm always trying to come up with some types of uh, uh, camping gear, new ways to use things you might already have. So I plan to keep making these. I hope you guys will stick with me when I'm not doing this massive adventure out here for eight weeks in a tent. Um, it's been a blast. I, I'd love to keep doing it. And we've still got a week and a half to go. So I'm trying to balance studying for my thing with uh, filming whatever I can. And uh, if anybody has any suggestions for... You know, things you'd like to see. I know I have a half-built camper. I'm going to try and finish off. And uh, that should be done. As soon as I'm done school, I'll focus on that. Finish that off. And then start using that out in the field to, to go to some interesting places and do some camping adventures. But I'm never going to be the guy that goes out with, you know, oh, here I am with dollar store stuff and a tarp. And we're going to try and, you know, sleep under a, a tablecloth and whatnot. Uh, I... I do comfortable camping, and uh, that's uh, what I do, so I hope you guys will come along with me on the rest of the, the journeys here. So, the dinner will be done in a while, sorry for rambling here, and uh, and then we'll hunker down as soon as that's all done. Hey guys, I swear that this rice cooking thing works, but it's probably best to do it uh, in the morning. <laughs> I've done it a bunch of times and left it there. I didn't know how long it really took to cook, so it does take a few hours, which is more than I have. I have to hit the hay because i got a big test or two tomorrow. On the other hand, this I'm sure is nicely done. Oh, and it sure is. Delicious beef and broccoli, Chinese takeout style. And so, you can have this for dinner here without the rice, low carb. Mm hmm. Now, that that's a good campfire meal. And, uh, I'll do more of these guys in the future. Typically, what people do is you'll fill them up with, uh, you know, rice or pasta, whatever you're trying to cook, usually in a small thermos, and uh, you'll bring it with you for, a, you know, the day or whatever, and uh, by the time you open it up, it's all cooked, but mm, this is so good, I've really got to dig into this, but yeah. Oyster sauce, soy sauce. Hunker down. I'll put on some Dick Pranicky. <laughs> and I'll keep putting up the videos. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for camping with Steve. <laughs>